<sighs> was that uh, was that sigh audible? Uh, this is the video review for knockoff MP12, or excuse me, uh, P12, because it's not actually a real masterpiece, so it's just a piece 12 Cybertron Warrior Lambor. Um, this is not the real Masterpiece Lambor. This is not the real Masterpiece 12. I did pay $30 for it on Amazon from a somewhat famous seller of knockoffs of Masterpiece figures. It, uh, like last time, I'm going to show off the box just because it's sort of noteworthy. <clears throat> this is the box that the knockoff comes in. And this one doesn't even say Transformers. Like, it should say Transformers right there, and it would if it was a real box or a real toy, or a real Takara Tommy masterpiece, but he's not. He's a Takasa Tony fake. <clears throat> um, I'm going to be a little bit unhappy in this review because Wheeljack, the knockoff Wheeljack that I got, was was actually a very reasonable toy. It had some weakness in the uh, the paint and a couple fit problems, but other than that, it was it was generally a pretty good figure. This is not... So this is the vehicle mode, and it is a Lamborghini Countach, which is the major Lamborghini model that they had back in 1984 when Transformers got started. <clears throat> and this is officially licensed by the Lamborghini company, or at least the masterpiece was, as evidenced by this. This little badge right there is the Fisher, official Lamborghini badge. Or it would be if it was the real thing. This is actually just a little yellow dot and a black triangle. And it doesn't actually look like the Lamborghini Bolt at all. On the back of the figure, if this was legit, it would say... So I can focus. It would say Lamborghini Countach. That doesn't say Countach. That says Kantek. Kanach. And Lamborghini says... Um, if I can even focus on it. It says, like, Lamborg Heary? <sighs> so, okay, so it's it's not the real thing, and you're not supposed to think it's the real thing. It's, it's generally sold as a knockoff. You generally know what you're getting out of the box. And when it first came out, it got a lot of favor, favorable reviews. A lot of people said it's as good as the real thing. In some ways, it's better than the real thing. The paint along the body is generally applied more cleanly, um, except in some places. Like there's some, there's some paint blotch on the roof, right on the edge there. It's picking up pretty well on the camera, so maybe it's going to show up in the video. But overall, some people have said that the color red seems to fit Sideswipe better. So this should be fine, right? It got a lot of really good reviews when it first came out back in... 2012 or 11 or 10 whenever it came out um but the problem is in the time since it came out this mold has gotten a lot of use and the fit is not nearly as good as it used to be it's actually a really good fit in vehicle mode um it stays together it, it doesn't have any like floppy parts it rolls it actually rolls and it has, well, that rear wheel doesn't really want to roll very well, but uh, this isn't a particularly flat surface, so I'll forgive that. Those wheels seem to roll a little. Anyway, this is the best mode this toy has, um, without any extraneous weapons or accessories attached as a car. It just looks like a Lamborghini Countach, and, and I commend it for that. Now, it can accept a couple accessories. It can accept this missile launcher. I'm going to get it out of the tray here. And the rifle. Um, it does so. It accepts both of these by way of a little hole in the roof. That little square hidden in the black triangle that I insert that into there. Like that. It snaps in. Cool snapped in just fine. And then this gun, silver pistol that Sideswipe Lambor used in the cartoon, uh, goes in here like this. And cool, now it's a very heavily armed Lamborghini Countach. Great. Well, that's not real, and I'm pretty sure he never had guns like that in the TV show. 
You might have had them in the IDW comic because the cars in the comic tend to sprout guns instead of going into robot mode if they're trying to hide from humans. But that this this is the form. This is the form I'm familiar with. This is what I think of when I think of sideswipe in vehicle mode. A red Lamborghini. And that works. And now we're gonna get to why it doesn't work. All right, I didn't do that transformation on camera because I don't like it. It's not very interesting and I didn't want to bungle it up on camera. Okay, this this toy makes me upset. So right now he's geared up with his, his standard accessories, the, the laser pistol, rifle gun, and the, uh, the shoulder launcher that I showed off in vehicle mode. You may have already guessed one of this uh, figure's major problems is he can't hold his gun. Now, I've heard that this is a problem with the original figure. It doesn't slot in very tightly, and they didn't really get the, uh, they didn't get the hands holding weapons thing right until a few figures down the line. But uh, as, as you can see, yeah, that's, that's just, that was some jostling. Now, yes, I'm, I'm jostling the figure, but I'd also like to point out that this, yeah, that just popped, ah, God, Arr! this thing is just, it's just a mess. It's just a mess, and even though it's a mess, it has pretty high review ratings on Amazon and a couple other places because, like I said, the initial run was actually very good. And this one is, is not. Um, let's go over, let's get rid of his sort of useless accessories and go over his articulation. Uh, here's, here's the good stuff. His shoulders can move up like that. They have a full range like that, so you can get a lot of good poses out of the shoulders. The elbows. This was one of the first Autobot cars, the Hasui cars, because the designer's name was Hasui. But it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have double jointing on the elbows. It has two joints on the elbows, but it's just a transformation joint, so it can do that, which isn't very useful. When it's actually extended the way it's supposed to extend, it does this. It goes up here, and that's it. Uh, it does rotate at the bicep. Oh, this torso. Rotates at the bicep, it's got a wrist swivel, it doesn't have any sort of hinge movement at the wrist, and the fingers open to not hold its gun, uh, and the finger, fingers are all one piece, and they're pretty loose as well. <sighs> the head. Now, I can't fault the original figure for this, uh, because I'm sure it had a tighter head joint than that, but this is just the loosest head joint, like... And I don't know a way, like, I suppose I could use floor polish if I got in there and just got in these, this crevice, whatever, come on, focus, focus, there we go. If I just got in there and maybe applied floor polish, but they're, they're, the assembly of this means that I cannot tighten a screw, which is what I feel really needs to happen, because I don't know, oh, well, his head opens, maybe there's a screw in there, no, nope, no screw, no brain. Just an empty skull. <sighs> uh, let's skip over the general torso for a second and get to the legs. I'll refocus. Okay, uh, give it a try. There we go. His legs. His legs go all the way out so he can do the splits really well. <laughs> Look at me, I can do the splits. Uh, I don't know why I would focus like that. I'm going to have to refocus in a second. Ah, oh, this torso. Um, the joints feel a little loose, especially in the hips, and that's a little annoying, but not as annoying as the fact that it only has 45, each leg only has 45 degrees of motion forward and backward. He has this little hip armor piece that you can lift up to get the full forward, forward motion, if you really want to call it that, but that feels a little bit like cheating, and you have to actually go in and tilt this thing when you want to do that. It's not as elegant as like a Gundam skirt where each side lifts up. Or MP10s for that matter. I don't have them, but I've seen the... I think he's got plates that... I, I shouldn't talk about a toy I don't have. Anyway, the knees. Again, masterpiece figure, but no double jointing in the knees. You get about 90 degrees of bend. There's a thigh swivel, which is good. There is nothing happening below the knee on this figure except the toys can point down the toes excuse me can point down which is mostly for the transformation and there is a little bit of ankle tilt for 
from an ankle rocker. That's it. Oh wait, the torso. The torso. So it doesn't have an ab crunch. That's not what's happening when I'm fiddling with this toy. The real problem is there is a tiny little slot right here. My finger's covering it up. There's a slot right there that is supposed to, if I can focus on it, there we go. There's a tiny slot there in the black of the bumper that is supposed to slot in to this tab right here. And it doesn't. The slot is too small, and the design in the torso is such that it never seems to close down far enough. I've tried stressing it, but I'm afraid I'll break it. And it just never... Uh, see, it feels like it feels like here, this part here, if I can even get it on camera, should be closing up all the way, and you shouldn't be able to see through it, but it doesn't. And then, so this this... Even if the chest piece could get all the way down to that peg, which it can't, it never would be able to actually peg in, so it won't. So the torso is just a floppy... Ugh. So, this doesn't feel like a $30 figure. It sort of feels like a $20 figure. And there are a few more problems with this figure, which I'm going to illustrate shortly. So, of all the grievances that I could hurl at this toy, I think the most biting and perhaps even damning of all is that he's not this guy. This is the Universe toy from 2008, I believe. And in every way I can really think from an engineering standpoint he's a better figure than this masterpiece knockoff okay so I would even argue that he's a better figure than the basic masterpiece let's get into that legs I was complaining about the hips they're really really um, limited on masterpiece Lambor because of his his hip crotch plate and the design of his legs this guy has no such problems he can go all the way back can go all the way forward, or well, can go all the way forward like that, and you don't you don't have to move any sort of crotch plate out of the way. His arms, his elbows, have double joints, so they can go all the way. They can curl up like that far. Look at that. He has a shoulder launcher. It actually doubles as his hand pistol, so he doesn't have as many accessories as the KO, as the masterpiece even. But it stays in place. It doesn't just fall out when I start shaking the, the figure around. Uh, his feet. His feet have um, boot rotation, foot rotation. They can move independently of the lower leg. They can point. They can even go up. Like so. So he can actually take some like pretty amazing and emotive poses if you are so inclined and if you can find balance better than I'm finding right now. Okay. So... Okay, he's going to fall forward. So, am I being fair? Am I being fair in saying that a toy that retailed for about 12, 10 to $12 when it first came out, that I actually paid 34 on the secondary market on eBay years after the fact, it, is it fair to say that this is better than the Masterpiece? I think so. His equipment, uh, all of his accessories, his, his gun and this little jetpack, you know, because... He had a jetpack in one or two episodes. All that stuff mounts on his car mode uh, effectively. Oh god, his head still moves. And it, so he can carry all of the accessories he has in both modes. Um, you can even do crazy stuff like this. You can take the rocket pack and fold it like this and mount it on top of the gun. It is actually designed to do this. I don't remember how. <laughs> I think this is how it was. Yeah. So now that's a real, that's a serious looking shoulder launcher. I mean, that just looks cool. I really like the way that looks. I think I like it better than the old one. So I'm getting, I'm getting all worked up again. Oh, shut up, grumpy machine. You're just mad you don't have any actual fingers and you can't play with these toys. Where was I? Um, so yeah, I think, I think this is a better figure. I think if you had the choice of picking up this guy for $30 and this guy for $30, 
You should pick up this guy if what you're looking for is a good figure. The joints are tight in most places. They, there are more and better joints. Um, the accessories are fun. He has a lot of play value. What, what do you get from this guy? Well, like I said in Wheeljack's review, you're best, basically paying for aesthetics and licenses. You're paying for the fact that it has a Lamborghini name, that it turns into a legitimate Lamborghini Countach from the 1980s, and it looks like G1 Lambor Sideswipe. This guy has a lot of liberties taken with the design. He doesn't have the black on the legs, he's red on the legs. He has white upper legs and he has white on his arms and a red chest plate, but he doesn't have the big white outline Autobot logo. He has a red one right here, and the rest of the chest is blank. And his weapons don't look like this or this, but he can hold them. So the real version of this doesn't have the torso problem and its head probably stays on and the, the weapons probably mount in it without falling out. But I just, I don't feel like I could recommend either the knockoff or the real thing for the price you're paying. Uh, <clears throat> and, and I'm sure a lot of people, you know, nobody's been watching these reviews lately, but maybe people are going to come back weeks or months after this and go, how dare you? How dare you complain? You can't compare a knockoff masterpiece to a generation's toy and expect blah, blah. This is just how I feel. And this is the recommend, this is the honest recommendation I would give anyone. If you have $30 and you can find this guy for 30, get him for 30. If you can find him for less, definitely get him for less. He is the ideal newest generation sideswipe. This knockoff is a crummy knockoff. And that's all there really is to say about it. So final thoughts on this guy. Well, I know I haven't been very kind, uh, but I haven't felt a particular need to be. It's a knockoff of a figure that had some faults when it was a new release. And while it's very pretty looking, it isn't giving me what I want in playability. And certainly not for the price I paid for it. But here are the actual numbers. Uh, in articulation, because of his limitations, he gets a 16. For the form and stability, obviously this mess of a torso, he gets a 15, mostly because he can still balance, obviously, even though his parts are doing this sort of thing. And, uh, speaking of gimmicks and accessories, I'm giving him a 19, and that's mostly because of these things, which are uh, the jackhammers that he used in the original show far more often than his jetpack. The problem is they don't store anywhere. You have to fold his hands in, and they install upside down on the KO so that this big open panel, it's even worse on this side, these these gaps are showing when they're installed like the way they're supposed to go in. If you, if you have it the other way around, they just pop out. They don't stand, and I don't feel like showing that on camera. So, finally, the transformation gets 10 points, 10 out of 16. Uh, it's not... I, I was complaining about it, but the, the transformation itself is not that bad. It's just, it feels sort of chintzy, especially the uh, the back panels, the, the, the so quote-unquote quote glass. It just feels like I'm going to snap it if I'm not careful, and I never like that. And it makes me take more time with the transformation than I think it really ought to take. I can definitely manhandle the generation story, the, the universe toy, a lot more better. So, um, where was I? Uh, let's see. Grumpy Machine, can you bring those scores up again? Right. Okay. So, 60 out of 100. Uh, this means that it's got a much lower score than that knockoff wheel jack that I did last weekend. It's got a lower score than the Titans Return Blur, which is a figure I paid $18 for a couple months ago. And in general, uh, it's a pretty good deal if you paid uh, $30 for it, but if you got a few more points out of the score for the $80 that the real figure goes for at retail, I, I really hesitate to say it's good value for that, for this figure. I Be very careful. Be very careful how you spend your money on these high-end toys because they're not all equal. And I hope that's the one thing you can take away from this review. I'm Senpai Prime, and remember, Always listen to your senpai.
usually. 